Mr. Tarot, though. Well, he's with you for all of center. Uh-huh. Oh. All right, that and that and that. Go check those printouts and we should be ready to go. All right, when I printed this off, uh, I found this laying on the side. <laughs> One of my random slides, don't know where it's in there. Um, so when we get to those two slides, maybe right up on the back or something. Otherwise, I gotta go back through. There you go. Oh, yeah, please, thanks. All right. So as far as the videos go and the folks that that missed class, I still have yet to receive. Actually, the whole KPFA program, I've received about six total since we started the Ag Skills homeworks. So I, I was trying to use this as an experiment, and it basically comes down to I don't know why I should waste 19 hours of my life putting up videos, because I see how many times they're viewed, and usually they're viewed zero to one times. So it's like. <laughs> Oh, really? If you don't watch the whole thing front to back and let it finish, I don't know. But usually it's like one, maybe two, and it's just like, ah! This is, yeah, all the videos I'm putting up, all the people that miss basically don't, don't they don't follow through and turn the stuff in, even though I gave them the opportunity. <laughs> so, thank you so much for showing up. You tried to watch some? You didn't find them? Yeah, but you didn't find these. You have the new ones. Yeah. Right. Right. They should be there. They're all there. I don't know when the last time you checked. I got them up about four days ago for the last class. Um, they're all there. If you want to, after the end of class, I'll, I'll bring it up and show you to you what it looks like. But you've come every day, so thank goodness. <laughs> so very, very proud of everybody in the room who's actually attending and doing all the stuff. You guys are my winners. I like you very much. I lost all the Hoxsons in the back. Um, <laughs> that's disappointing. I lost all the Mortensons. 
That happens, I guess. It's a family. <laughs> they talk themselves out of it, I guess. Uh, but hopefully they'll continue to watch the videos and, and follow up. If anybody is still watching these videos and hasn't turned anything in, give me a call. We'll work on getting you guys certified, okay? The last thing I want is to have eight people finish. I definitely want to have as many people as I can finish, all right? So we'll work out something. Turn in your stuff or we'll, maybe if you give me a business plan in the end, you'll show me that you learned something. I don't know. Okay. Um, key criteria for business plans. Of course, we talked about introduction uh, day. We talked about our business model and executive summary. We've talked about our marketing and sales. Today, we're talking about our financial data. Next, we'll be talking about management team. Going to take a week off after that to work on your business plans. If you don't spend the time working on your business plans that time, it's a wasted, wasted time. Um, then we're going to do two weeks of private evaluations. So we're still, after we do the, the business plan training, you're still three, four weeks out. OK, so plenty of time to work on your business plan, right? Right now, we're just doing drafting, all right? Um, Financial data today, we'll go over that. I, it's not all that long of a, a lecture. Um, it's very vague because, first of all, financial numbers aren't my forte. But at the same time, um, I don't want to like pigeonhole my explanation of what I'm expecting in business plans because so many different business plans demand so many different financial um, plans. So. Based upon the way you're scripting your business plan, hopefully you could find something in this lecture that fits for you. And then uh, we're going to go over the Excel spreadsheets that I emailed out to everybody. Did you receive those? Good. You got those. I emailed those out a couple days ago. Um, they should be up. They're basically all the different sections for the financial plan. It's an Excel spreadsheet that if you put the numbers in, it'll populate to all the different sections. Um, it's a perfect financial plan for small businesses in Hawaii. Use it. We're also going to go over, so there, in addition to the financial data, which is that Excel spreadsheet, there's the financial plan. So there has to be a written section in addition to the numbers and graphs and tables. Okay, So we'll go over a lot about the written part here. Um, we'll go over the Excel spreadsheet. And then I was able to pull up ag plans. I figured out what my password was. Um, so I'll bring up ag plans. And I really want to show it to you so that you can see most importantly, the sections that I want to have in the financial plan, the written part, uh, not necessarily the data. Okay, So we'll just pick it up from here. Does anybody have any questions about what's been going on? Concerns at all about their business plan? Everybody has an idea now, right? And you've drafted something, right? Good, a lot of head shaking. I like that. Not from this guy, but, <clears throat> but enough, right? And my arm's getting better, everybody. Notice that? Kamani oil, so so good on burns. It's just flaking away. If I get any on, on your food, just let me know. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's pretty gross. I don't like flaking away, man. It's pretty gross. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about financial data. And the key to your financial data, OK? We're just talking numbers now. We're not talking about the words describing the numbers. We, we need to make sure that all of your data is convincing. Convincing to who? A lender, right? Is it correct? Are all of the numbers that you have in your financial plan as close to accurate as you could possibly find? Are you referencing data with these numbers so that you, if anybody doubts if your numbers are correct, then you can reference the document you got it from and just say, this is what this says. So that's what I'm using. OK? So if you could justify your correctness, that's, that's key. So it wants to be correct, and it has to be detailed. So you're not going to want to have in your financial plan salary and then a chunk. You're going to want to break down the salary of each one of your managerial employees. Um, you're going to not just want to have materials. You're going to want to have fertilizers, uh, oil, all these specific things. So you want to have it detailed and specific, OK? If you're going to buy any book, remember I always have one book recommendation pretty much for every section. Um, I would say this is. The best book for entrepreneurial financial management, as it that is the title. Um, Jeffrey Cornwall, David Vang, and uh, Gene Hartman. Wonderful book. Basically, it's an applied approach to financial ma management. It, it teaches you through example and application as opposed to kind of vague terms and you know beating around the bush. This is 
pretty specific to small business and to um, startups. Okay. Entrepreneurial financial management and applied approach. Well, when we're talking about our financial data, let me make sure that I didn't turn that off. You could still hear me? Okay. Um, we want to talk about relevant concerns. Now, remember I said your, your business plan should be structured on what you want out of life, uh, what you want out of your experience as a business owner, okay? Um, relevant concerns with that would be how much money do you want to invest in the business? Um, if you want to become the biggest, baddest dude on the planet, you may want to invest a little bit more extra money. If you want to just start a startup with using very little, uh, little investment dollars, then you're going to use a lot less money as far as the investment goes. So um, be sure that your data represents what you're trying to show and you state in your other sections of your business plan as far as the level of commitment um, and how your small business will be structured. You definitely want to know when are you breaking even. This is super important because you're going to have to have money going in um, in order to make money. You're going to have to invest in your business. You're going to have to buy raw materials. You're going to have to buy packaging products and all these other things before you make your first sale. And you really need to think, at what point am I going to break even with all my investment that I've put in? Um, my wife right now is we're trying to start her up with some, some uh, farmer's market type small business stuff where she, she can make a little bit of extra income at home. Um, this is where she's having trouble while I'm helping her design her business plan. She does not like to spend money to make money. So it's, <laughs> it's a huge problem for her to put down $100, even though I will put it down on a piece of paper and break it down, that we could turn that $100 into $1,000. Yes, stocks, it's here. All right. <laughs> You're right on time. Perfect. Can you tell I'm desperate for students at this point? <laughs> We're talking about relevant concerns as far as your financial data concerns. We're talking about just the numbers, okay? Um, like I was just telling them, my wife does not like to invest money in a business to make money. Uh, thank you very much. Do I have extra printouts? No. I got them printed off. I'll be right back. No worries. I got more. There's one page in there that's kind of messed up. We'll, we'll know when we get there. You might have to write on the back of the page. I always end up sweating in this class. <sighs> All right. We, what were we talking about? My wife, right? Yeah. All right. I love talking about my wife. Um, she does not want to spend. <laughs> she does not want to spend hundred dollars to make a thousand bucks. As much as I break it down for her, as much as I show her that there's no way to lose money if we go this route. She says, I need that $100 right now. And that, that is certainly not a way to succeed in small business. Um, the numbers don't lie. Basically, if you have the right financial data and you have um, 
the right costs going in versus going out. If the numbers state that you could turn that $100 into $1,000, you need to act on that, okay? Um, put money in so that you can make some, but at the same time, don't put too much in where you're not gonna be able to break even for a very long time. So keeping your costs low, but maintaining your level of quality that you are striving for is super important. So that comes into play. All those things come into play right there. Um, how much profit can be made? Remember, we're talking about pricing. Um, pricing is super important as far as profit goes. If you change your pricing from $4.99 to $5.99 on whatever, bar of soap or something, that's a huge difference. That's a 20% increase in profit. If you could somehow justify that and then convince your customers that that is a good value, um, maybe your pricing is off and you should increase it by that dollar and make that extra 20%, okay? So, of course, market analysis, understanding what someone's willing to pay for your product, right? And how many sales do I need to make? That's super important as far as the break-even analysis. When we look at that, I'm gonna show you a graph that's gonna show that you need to sell X amount of units in order to break even. After that moment, you are in the profit side. So, knowing where that spot is month to month, as expenses change, you know, you have your marketing calendar and your marketing plan changes month by month. You definitely want to have that indicating um, each phase of, of the year, okay? Whether it be quarterly, most people do monthly, okay? Um, your personal influence, your personal info will also influence uh, the chances of you getting a loan. Not necessarily only credit history collateral, but also recommendations, or just plain having a kick-ass product is good enough to get you get you some some lending. So um, when it comes to like crowd surfing, a uh, crowd surfing, <laughs> that's something totally different. Crowdsourcing, um, <laughs> as far as crowdsourcing goes, most crowdsourcing people that want to give you an extra 20 bucks, for it, they don't really care what your credit history is. And when you stack 1,000 of those people on top of each other, that's 1,000 people that don't really care what your credit history is, and they're only losing 20 bucks by helping you out, you just went up to $20,000. And it's without anybody doing a, a credit check, okay? So there are other avenues, but at the same time, when we're talking about bank loans, FSA loans, um, this is a big deal, especially with FSA, the Farm Services Agency, who gives out lending to farmers that can't get loans from banks. Um, this really isn't such a big deal. Recommendations, not so much a big deal as, as much as experiences. If you have three to five years as a farm manager um, and your credit history is pretty poor, you still might be able to get a loan, an operations loan, but maybe not an ownership loan. Collateral, when it comes to FSA, huge. If you have some kind of collateral and you could put it down with the Farm Services Agency, they'll be happy to take a look at your collateral, right? Because they know that people that go into FSA um, usually don't have much of it, and if they do have much, it's the reason why they go into FSA is for another reason, probably credit history, um, liens, some sort of delinquency on their bills, okay? So definitely relevant concerns. Hopefully through this program, I'm gonna aid you in overcoming your financial fears. All right, at least your small business financial fears. Your personal financial fears, that's not in my business. <laughs> but when it comes to your small business, Lily Koi got stuck in my throat. All right, overcoming financial fears. Learn the language of the business. Know what revenue means. Know what a balance sheet is. Know what all these terms that accountants and financial professionals and lenders use, okay? There are plenty of lists online that you can search and just looking up like bank terms. If you don't understand a lot of these terms that are gonna be approached to you when you do lending, you need to go into the office understanding those definitions before that lender starts throwing words at you that you don't understand. So do your homework, right? Understanding the, the language of the business, go online and actually study um, what is a cash flow projection? Like, really break it down. What is that? So when the lender comes up to you and asks you, well, let's talk about your cash flow projection, you're not in the woods and lost, okay? Um, this is a great way to overcome your financial fears is understanding how profitable your business is. 
If, if after a little bit of help, we figure out that your, prof, your business can make $100,000 a year, doesn't that make it a whole lot easier to try to figure it out? If I said to you, based on what you're telling me, if you did what you're telling me you want to do, I can give you 100, you can make $100,000 a year after three years. I mean, doesn't that shake off a lot of the financial fears? So understanding that you have a well enough product that people are willing to pay for it and you have a market, then that will help you overcome those fears. Can I pay, pay uh, bills, salaries, and ourselves on time? Businesses seem to go along fine for years and then all of a sudden they hit this kind of transition period that they're not prepared for. Whether it be expansion, business is getting big enough, um, management changes, or just in general the market that they're in changes. Um, then all of a sudden they have <laughs> three years, four years into the, to the business, they're asking themselves, wow, do I have enough cash flow to do salary this month? Or they basically didn't stay on top of the financials and the projections. Staying on top a year, two, three, five years in advance as far as your financials go, you should never ask yourself this question after you've written your business plan. Or if you see yourself, your business going into transition or some kind of change, you need to reevaluate your business plan before you start asking yourselves this question, especially when it's next month or next quarter. Okay? Can you pay your bank loan? Bank loans are funny, right? You don't want to miss a payment. Um, affects your credit score personally. Now, when you're talking businesses and stuff, working out payment plans with lenders, uh, you could do quarterly. You could do biannually. Uh, it's all as far as the negotiation with the lender. Um, so you need to set up your business plan so that you're paying off that bank loan as the number one top priority. Just like anybody else, hopefully people are paying their mortgage before they buy food because <laughs> The effect that, that, a, that a, a missed mortgage payment has on your credit score could seriously affect you fi hugely financially. Um, and so that's, that's a key concern for folks is really, can I pay that bank loan? Please have in your financial and your business plan all that set up for at least a year out. All right? If you have $10,000 profit from last year and you know that your bank loan is $10,000, how much of that can you prepay for the next year with your profit. Stay ahead of the game. And what is your business worth? Now, when you're, start, when you're a startup, it's really not worth much until you start buying equipment and collateral. And then again, you don't even own that until you pay it off. So how much is your, your business worth? Certainly a, a fear that people have. Um, this takes, I think, a financial professional to figure out a lot of that. Most people don't consider their equipment how much their trees cost? Like uh, Uncle Randy went out and did some kind of evaluation of his business worth. There is a value to each tree, and you need to have that written out in the business plan and the financial plan. Um, so having an accountant or a bookkeeper or somebody finding out what your business is worth, especially at those periods of transition, is super important. So if you are hitting a point of transition and you go and find out your business is worth twice of what it was when you first started because you just, you've been buying equipment and you've been buying all these other things that, sure, they depreciate, but you've been staying up on depreciation value, then, um, and you don't have any money in the bank, your business is still worth twice what it, when it first started. You still have plenty of collateral. So um, understanding that if the more collateral you have equals business worth, okay? So buy equipment, buy structures, buy land, buy land if you can, all right? For your guys' financial plan, I would like to have, I've mentioned this before, these three sections, right? A balance sheet, which is a snapshot of this point in time and your level of profit and loss. Income statement. It's over a certain period of time you're looking at your revenue sales. Cash flow is the ability to pay bills. So essentially this is money going out, money coming in, and where am I at right now in this current situation, this date? Or even better, getting a balance sheet, a projected balance sheet for a year out, two years out. Okay. So if you can have these three sections in your business or your financial plan, these are tables, folks. These are graphs. These are not necessarily written word 
paragraph form sections, okay? <laughs> Let's talk about types of funding before we get any further. This is that vague part I was talking about. Self-financing, certainly an option when it comes to funding, especially for you folks. Uh, if you have a little bit of retirement or money set aside, it's a great way um, to start up a business. <coughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> never use your own money to start up a business. Never use your savings and never use your retirement to start up a small business venture. Always get lending for that. Because if you fail, you don't lose your retirement. You lose credit history or some value or equity or some sort, anything like that, but don't lose that retirement fund, okay? So a lot of folks will turn in their 401k and start up a business. Holy scary. Please don't do that. But you can if you want. You can borrow money from yourself or worse, you could borrow it from friends. <laughs> friends who are not related to you. This is the perfect way to lose friends or your family. This is a great way to be disowned by your family. <laughs> Unless you have written out a contract that is signed by both parties and you're talking about borrowing from your friends and family, please, please, please have a contract written up that has all the stipulations of the contract so that there is no question of who's due to do what and whose responsibility is what. It, it just states that you will make a payment on this date this many times a year for this long. And if anybody deviates from there, then they're avoiding contract and then the other party is at fault. Plain and simple, okay? So as, as annoying as that sounds doing a contract with your family, trust me, the person giving you that money would rather do it with a contract. Even if they say they don't want to, back in their head they're going, yeah, it's probably a pretty good idea, okay? There's bootstrapping. One of the best ways to fund, no it's not, to fund your business. Bootstrapping is basically creative ways to exploit opportunities to launch and grow with limited resources. So that is having a second job to save money to start up your business. This is selling products at the farmer's market to make money to start up your business. This is um, asking for gifts through like the crowds uh, sharing and stuff. So um, great way to do it if you don't have to pay that money back. <laughs> if you have to pay that money back, um, you're gonna owe yourself that money and you'll never end up paying yourself back. So this is one of those situations where you're basically self-financing, but you're doing it really, really slowly and you're slowly chipping away at it. Now if you can, if you could justify having a second job and putting in 12 extra hours a week to make money for your small business, which you want to start in four years, it's totally understand why. Get that. But maybe it might be best to say, take that money as you're making it and put it into like a Kemper fund or something that will continue to make you money while you're saving up to make more money. Okay. Invest your money so that you can get some sort of interest or something. So over the next four years, you could possibly increase that $10,000 to, I don't know, $14,000, okay? Equity. You can exchange or share ownership, return for capital investment. You can exchange ownership of the business, of equipment, the land, um, your house, Whatever you want to do. This is equity. Doing equity through a bank um, is pretty wise if you're taking equity out of your existing business and putting it into your existing business. If you're taking equity out of your home and putting it in your small business, you're like my father and you deserve to get slapped. Please don't take money out of the value of your home. Never take money out of your retirement. Don't take money out of your own pocket. Okay? It's a pretty big gamble, small business. Why should you be the one who has to pay for it? I don't know. We okay on camera? Oops. 